So do any of the following sound like something that you're going through? You're sitting at your desk and waiting for your words to come, but they just don't. You may know how you want your story to end, but you have no idea how to get there. You think you're a pantser, but you can't actually seem to pants your novel. The thought of a white screen terrifies you. You think writer's block is just something you're always gonna have to deal with. Do any of those sound like what you're going through? Then suit up, put that armor on, grab your weapon of choice, and get ready to defeat writer's block once and for all. That sounds like a pretty big promise, right? Let me put to rest those doubts that are currently crawling around in your head right now. There are those incredibly blessed people that can sit down and hammer out 2,000 words without planning at all. But there are also those equally blessed people that can hammer out a whole story's outline in just one day. While I didn't do my outline in one day, I think that both of these options should be treated equally. One is not better than the other. So I'm gonna lay out exactly how to defeat that white screen and get your novel on the page. So tip number one is to turn that white dragon into a white bunny. I'll explain what that means in a second. That blinking vertical line freaks us all out in the beginning. The first step towards defeating that anxiety is to change your perception about what that blink page really means. Henceforth, I will call this evil, terrible white page the white dragon. Most of us fear the white dragon for one reason, the fear of being judged. We want every word that appears on the page to be absolutely perfect, something that we can send straight away to a publisher and we'll get multi-million dollar deals for. And then if it's not multi-million dollar worthy, you might find yourself just promptly erasing everything that you just wrote. But why is it that you're feeling judged? No one, and I seriously hope this, otherwise you might have a stalker, is looking over your shoulder and reading your raw material. If they are, call the cops or have a serious sit down with whoever that person may be. You need that freedom to learn what type of writer you are, and that's a very personal thing. But you have to understand that the first draft is not about filling the page with perfect words. It's about filling your page with words, period. A lot of us think that we're a crappy writer at some point or another. Even really well-established writers think this. But once you flush the idea out of your mind that you're a crappy writer, if you don't nail it all out in one perfect, beautiful draft, you'll find you actually start to enjoy the practice of writing. Your white dragon starts to look a little bit less like a giant flying reptile. Instead of looking at your screen with fear, you should look at it with wonder and excitement. Your novel is waiting to be written and you're the only one that can tell it. There's a certain freedom to knowing that that white page is just your canvas and it's not your prison. It shouldn't raise walls between you and your story. It should let you see the whole landscape and wonder at what it could be. And guess what? Your dragon is shrinking and shrinking into a tiny fluff ball now. Well, bunnies aren't that small, but you get what I mean. That is what I mean by turning your white dragon into a white bunny. It's tiny and cute now and hopefully disease-free. Tip number two is to have a plan. Or better put, make an outline. <gasps> I know, I know, I said the O word. Don't panic. If you're not a fan of outlining, believe me, it can actually be fun. No, I'm not crazy, and yes, I did just say that outlining can be fun. Think about this for a second. If you're driving across country to visit relatives, you don't just jump in your car and leave. You have to pack. You gotta make sure that your phone is charged enough to make it there and back. You gotta get snacks, you gotta make sure the dogs are boarded. Simply put, you need a plan. Can some people travel effectively without writing out their plan? Yes, but do they occasionally forget things like their toothbrush? Mm, yeah, your writing is no different. Constructing a game plan will help tremendously in finally giving writer's block the boot. I thought for a very, very long time that I was a pantser. I thought that I was a better person because I was a pantser and I was so cool. And I was frankly too lazy to try any other route. After reading a million books on the craft of writing, I started to think that maybe these people were onto something. I started to make an outline and then I realized that my writing was getting a lot easier. It was faster when I actually knew what I was going to write about beforehand. <laughs> Vivian, making an outline takes way too long. I don't have that kind of time. Uh, how much time do you think you're wasting staring at that blank screen over there. Hmm? A lot. So how do you go about making an outline? I have two other videos right now and I will link both of them down below that detail this further, but I'll give you a brief overview in this one right here. First, there's the word vomit. It's not as violent as it sounds. Put everything involving your story down on one long list and then organize that list. Once it starts to make some story-wise sense, go back and expand on each one of those points. Play connect the dots and join your novel together. If you know how your novel ends, you can actually do exercises like outlining from the end to the beginning to see if you can come up with anything else that's interesting. My method involves outlining on flashcards to the scene level and then transcribing all of that into a Word document. In the Word document, I delve into each scene and see what happens. Since it's a much bigger picture, you wouldn't get stuck on the minute details like you would if you tried to pants it. For more details on outlining, definitely check out those two videos that I have down below. Tip number three is to get in the writing zone. Get in the zone! Have you already completed the above steps? but you just feel like your writing's still flopping, then you need to make sure that your time and your space is distraction-free. This is an area of my life that I've been extremely regimented in because otherwise I knew I wouldn't get any writing done. In the beginning especially, don't let yourself use social media. Just don't do it. It's also helpful to steal away in a different room, away from all people and pets and anybody that can be distracting. You can still listen to music as long as it doesn't distract you. But what if you like the idea of being in a public place or sitting at a cafe sipping on coffee while you write? Don't worry, this is just temporary. For some people, I mean, you could keep doing it forever, but it's up to you. Once you're able to slay the white
white dragon consistently, you'll be able to trust yourself in a public place or with your loved ones and still be able to get your writing done. This is a strange analogy, but I know a lot of people own dogs. If you've ever trained your dog to do a trick, you make sure they can't fail in the beginning. They need that solid ground that they can catch on really quick. You make it super easy for them and then gradually add in distractions so that by the end of it, they're healing next to you and they're maintaining eye contact even if they're walking next to toys and balls and treats and everything. You need to do the same thing for your writing. Everyone that's just starting out needs to train their minds to focus on the blank piece of paper. So make it easy on yourself and make sure you're in an environment where you can't fail. I practiced this particular tip during Camp NaNoWriMo and regular NaNoWriMo last year. By the end of November, I was able to graduate to having distractions again. I like noise in the background besides music. I like staring off into space to think, but usually you need something to stare at to do that. Plus, I'm just needy. I like to be around all my loved ones while I'm writing. Side note, dictation is awesome for learning how to ignore distractions. It's harder to check your social media when you're pacing around the room speaking into a microphone. I'm going to be releasing a dictation series here shortly, so make sure if you have any questions you want me to answer in that video to put them down below. Tip number four is you're writing for yourself. Remember that. What makes you want to be a writer? For most of us, it's that we just love stories. We love getting lost in another world, and at some point we've had some brilliant idea for a story pop into our minds. So for the first draft, you should purely be writing for your own enjoyment. What do you think would make the most interesting story? Sit down and write it without any shame. If someone doesn't agree with your writing, then that's what the editing process is for. Just push it out of your mind and focus on what you want. For this reason, you might just find a project that you're no longer passionate about. You might be stuck and you've been thinking about just giving up on the writing. Sometimes it's as easy as changing things up, like adding new subplots or characters or things like that. But other times you just want to ditch the thing. It's okay to walk away. Don't force yourself to write something you don't want to write anymore because guess what? You're not going to be able to write it. If you want to set it aside for some time and work on a different project, then that's okay. Having a passion for your story makes you eager to tell it and then it also makes it easier to write it. While we're on first drafts, no writer's first draft will be seen by anyone unless they want it to be seen. So just stop thinking that your work has to be immediately perfect. Turn off that inner editor. They're of no use right now. You may go through one or four or six different phases of editing before you ever feel like you want somebody to read your novel. And that's okay. In fact, it's kind of the standard. It's normal to have insecurities for your writing, but it's important to understand that it's not permanent. We're not chiseling our stories into stone never to touch them again. They're malleable and flexible things. Remember, only you can turn your white dragon into a white bunny and you should rejoice at the creative freedom of a blank page. So to reiterate, one, you should get rid of your writing fears, two, you should make an outline, three, you should eliminate distractions, and four, it's your story. Do with it what you want. This is literally an issue I don't have to worry about anymore, and these are just all the things that I did to overcome that. Since I know ahead of time what I'm going to write, it's easy for me. If you don't do any of the other things in this video, please make sure you try to make an outline. If you're currently trying to pants and it's just not working, that's usually why. You're just not a pantser, and that's okay. I'm not a pantser. There's a lot of people that aren't pantsers. All right, so I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Remember to subscribe because I post new writing videos every Wednesday. You can read some excerpts from my debut novel, The Elysian Prophecy, on my website, linked down below. And if you ever have any questions or suggestions for my new videos, be sure to tweet me at Vivian Reese. Bye guys.